Hello. Today and next, I'm going to show you how to create a process slide for your AP art portfolio um, using Pixlr. So you don't have to worry about using Photoshop if you don't have that at home. Um, so I will present my screen to you so you can see that. It's pixlr.com, and I'm going to be using the Pixlr X. They're sort of... Um, easier version just because I think it brings things out a little more. If you're familiar with Photoshop, I recommend using the Pixlr E version because that has a little more, it's more similar to Photoshop. So I have um, some things I'm gonna use for it. I've already put them in a separate folder here. So I have my AP portfolio all set. I have things for a process slide that I put in there. I have the image itself. I have, um, if I can make this bigger so you can see them extra large. There we go. I have the image, the painting it's kind of based on, sketches before I did that one. In process picture of myself. If you have any of these, and for my students, yes, I'll be sharing all those with you as soon as I can get this stuff done tonight. Um, that's really helpful because you can see here my palette, my colors, I'm in the landscape. It really gives me insight, gives the viewer insight to my process. Uh, sample one I tried out and then... Um, some sketches. So sketches, if you've done like um, a color swatch or just any in-process stuff you have is a great way to start all these different, put these things together. Because you want to give, the whole goal of a process slide is to give the AP readers an idea of how you get to your final piece. So I'm not going to open an image here because I need to create a new plain background for my process slide. I'm gonna start with web small and make it even smaller. Because if you remember, the maximum dimension was 780 by 530, I think. So I'm just gonna do 750 for um, my width because it's gonna look you know, horizontal like a slide. And I highly recommend using like a gray, a medium to dark gray for your background. I tried to make one black in Pixlr and because the background is black, I couldn't see where my, my actual paper or image was and that was irritating. The colors in white I think are distracting. I want to see, I want the viewer to see my imagery and what I'm doing right away. So here is my background, my image, and then I'm going to start to add things to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my text. So the text tool is this T over here and if I click here to add new text it's always going to give me some fun little thing um, in there. I can just, oops, scroll over that back um, backspace and I can click in here but when you first start I find it easier to start over here and I'm going to say let's see um I create my paintings by uh, let's see how about I start my paintings let's see I start my works because you want to remember it's about process I start each artwork each painting the paintings let's be specific I start each painting um by creating a few thumbnails, thumbnails. Now thumbnails is a great word because it's telling them I know what a thumbnail is, I know what a color study is or a value study or things like that, um, or value studies, studies of views around me because I'm talking about painting in the landscape around me. I then mix my color palette color palette, block in the shapes. Ooh, you know what else I'm going to say? Block in the shapes and build layers of color. So that's a general overview of my process. I might also want to add things like, how do I choose the piece? How do I decide which ones I want to do? I create a few thumbnails or value studies of the views around me. I could say like based on the depth, forms, and light, I then mix my color palette, block my shapes, and build layers. So I'm telling them what I'm considering, why I'm choosing. So this is my basic process. Now, this size isn't bad. Let's see what size this is. Arial's a nice font. If I click on this, look at, I can do all these things. Once you have it typed, you can, what is that? That's, you can't read that. Make sure you pick a legible font. It's a little cutesy, but it's not awful. But the idea is they should be able to quickly and easily read your text. The readers are looking through hundreds of these. They don't want to try and decipher your text, and that's a lot of space. So I want like a basic 
font. I don't want, you know, this looks like I don't know how to write, whatever. I want something, I could do something that looks very, I don't know, that's very, uh, oh, my dog just saw a squirrel. I don't know if you could hear that. I don't love any of these. They're really, they have a lot of really like funny fonts. I want a basic font. Where did Ariel go? Ariel, come back to me. Trebuchet, veranda, veranda. How about that? There we go. So all my images there, I can right align, left align, center, however I want. I'm just going to start here for the moment, see how it goes. Um, again, I like the white color. If you have to choose a color, go with something light. You want it to match the images in your painting. So like, I don't want to do something like fluorescent yellow. See, that's hard to read. I got to make it easy for them to read. They're looking at a lot of paintings. This is easy to read, but if it doesn't match my paintings or things in there, <laughs> This is great. My dog is like running around crazy. All right. So I just go white because I want my pictures to be what really the viewer sees. So, all right. Plus, I'm going to add a new layer this time and I'm going to add an image. Really hope that squirrel goes away soon. Um, I'm going to add the image of the process that I'm working on. So there's that. Now, this isn't a bad size. Popped up pretty easily. I'm going to shrink it down and put it here. Now notice, to add another one, what I had to do is I had to go over here, this is a layers palette. I had to find a new layer. So right now, every time I add something, it's gonna give me a new layer. So I have my background layer, I have the text, I can see it there, and now I have this image. So to add an image, I the first time I did this, I was like, where is the right icon? I don't see it. There isn't one, I add a new layer. And when you add a new layer, it says, what do you wanna add? Do you want an empty layer? Do you want an image? So I go to image again. And it's easier if you edit things ahead of time. So like this image, look what happens if I try and add this image. One, it's giant. Did I mess it up? I think there it is. It's giant, like it's huge. So what I could do is I could go down here and do this and then I could crop the whole thing and it's, just, it's kind of annoying to do this. So I would recommend, oh, that's right, I can't crop in here. If I crop, I'm gonna crop the whole thing. So this is like, no, just get rid of this. So command, I'm sorry, control Z or Command Z if you're working on a Mac, it's much easier. Just undo, 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 Command Z. It's like my favorite thing in here, Command Z. Get rid of that, undo all the way back. And I can go back a ways, which is super helpful. So I'm gonna go back to my home and I'm going to open an image and I'm gonna open that image because I need to crop it. I need to create new. I want it to be its own file and not add it to my current one. I'll just make it the original size. So I can crop it here and then I can bring it in much more easily. So zoop. and actually as I do that, I don't need all of this. Being able to, cause I'm gonna put a few images on this slide. I don't really wanna make it so that it's like distracting. I want like, it should be obvious. I'm painting actually in the landscape, but that's really what's important right there. So I can crop it down quite a bit. Save that. I want it to be a JPEG. This is my edited one. So I'm gonna go control E. So in, or, I'm sorry, dash E. So I know it's edited. It's high quality, it's a JPEG. Now, if I look at this, I know that my whole image has to be smaller than 780. So this is already gonna have to be resized when I'm there. This is just a scaled down version to start. So I can just make the biggest dimension 400, good enough, it'll work. Now, this is, let's see, I think I've gotta save that. Well, here, no, it's in there. All right, so now I can go back, it's in there. There we go, same, same kind of thing I did it once before. So back to the pixeler. Pixeler. Yes, I have saved it. Thank you. Now I'm going to go back to my home. I can click on where I'm at. This is the one I'm working on. And then I have this here. So my best recommendation, if you're doing this for the first time and you're not like a digital artist person, it's okay. Do a little. Work along with me. Watch a little. Do a little. It makes life easier. All right. So I need to arrange and put that picture in there. So I'm gonna go over here to my layers palette again, add a new layer. Every time I add something new, it's a layer. It's gonna be an image layer. And it's gonna be this picture right here. Let's move that down here. And I still wanna arrange the page in an interesting way. So this works, that's fine, that's nice. Um, and this is really probably what I want to be the biggest because this is explaining my process a lot more than this one. This tells me this is the, the painting I built toward, but it's not the main priority of the slide. The main priority is the process. So maybe I'll even make that smaller and move it over. And I'm probably going to have this one all by itself on the next slide. So that's fine like this. All right. So I go here, I put this in, and now I want to put my sketches in. So let's do another layer. I'm going to go over here. Thank you for your downloads. 
go over here, one more image layer. This is my sketches. All right, it's not my sketches. I don't know where they are. Oh, it's too big again. I these are sketches I found online. Totally cheating, but you know, what's important here that you know how to make a process slide or that I find the sketches I used to make this painting years and years ago. That's not important. All right, so this shows my process. It shows that I understand value studies. I can put that in there now. Oh my gosh, our stuff, it's getting crowded. So here's what I wanna do. This is less important. This, I want them to see that I understand these, but again, less important. So maybe I'll put these here and maybe, but I wanna arrange it in an interesting way. And I might, maybe I can even cover up some of that. Now this works because it's on top and I want them to see that value study. If I don't like it, I can change my layers around and pop other things behind them. Look at that. So maybe, maybe, let's see, what if I, Huh, what if I do like this and like this? Uh, I think we gotta make this a little smaller. Ooh, I know, I know, I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go here and see, I can play, it's good. This, see, that's a white part of the page. It's a lovely, now I have this thing going on here. It's good. Let's give it a little bit of room to breathe. So I see all these things, but this is not working, right? So I can go this way and say, I want you to stop there and I move it down. And now I can do things like, I think this is still gonna be a little smaller. I can say, all right, what if I go to this text and go back to my text tool over here. If I double click inside the text box, I can mix, mix, I'm reading the word mix right there. I can edit the text that's in here. And let's see, what if I do this? Do I have enough room to make it go down the side? Ooh, I still gotta move it in a little bit, don't I? Oops, sorry. I'll maybe adjust that a little more so that I can make the shapes fit there. Ooh, I could put that layer in front. Oh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the text layer in front of the picture of me and then that'll work because that's a light color on a dark color. Ooh, I like it. Now, see when I get this little, looks like a, a um, compass that's making, making it so I can move the pieces. If I'm not getting that, I can go to my arrange tool over here and do that. So. I want my text on top of my picture. Look at that. So the text is still very legible. It's on top of the pictures, the colors and things kind of relate. No, sorry, not another text layer. I'm gonna go back to my arrange tool so it doesn't keep trying to add more text layers. Maybe I make that just sort of clip in there. I feel like this sticks out too much. If I were really picky, I do things like this. Come on, double click. And I would, you know, get some space in there, get some things. So now when I look at it, what I wanted to say is there, my picture showing me working is there. So I see my process. The final one is there. My in-depth work is here. If I had been smart and taken a picture of my palette right here, my color palette, so they could see how I'm working things together. Or if I wanted to say more like, I work things up as a color family. I try to build colors and I mix as they relate to each other. You could say things like that. All kinds of process words are fabulous. Use process words like mock-ups, thumbnails, value studies, like I mentioned, color palette, color swatches, sketches, prototypes, experimentation. This is your description of how you do it. This is a great way to explain your process to the readers and to get your point across and if you don't have 10 images, it's a great way to come up with another slide in your portfolio in a very easy way. I would have said everybody needed these in the past, but now that we need less pieces, if you have 10 fabulous pieces, you're done. So, and you know what? I did want to talk about size of the text. What size is this text here? What did we end up doing? Text. No, oh, I'm in here. I don't need a new one. What size? This is 26. I think that's a nice... Um, size there because it's readable it's easy for them to see it's not too much now here's a text layer i don't want so let's oh that's probably good this is a text layer i don't want i can click that little button and it goes away i can right click on it and a little trash can layer here pops up i can you know change text in here so there's a lot of little things that are available to you here and it's nice because you can just scroll over and find them the little you know ideas of what everything is will pop up you don't need fancy things you don't need like radiated backgrounds you want the focus to be on your images plain very readable text they're reading quickly and make sure they can see your process because you're making a process slide 
Then we're going to go here. We're going to, wait, not there. I want to save it. So down here on the bottom, save, process slide. I think I made one already. We'll call this process slide two. I want it to be a JPEG, quality is high. Ooh, it has the same size requirements as the last one. And it needed to be under, what was it, 530? Let's just make it 500, make it nice and easy. Download, I am good to go. I'm gonna save this to my folder of my final ones would be my folder of everything is in here. So I'd move my process slide in there so I know that everything I need is right there. I am all set. I can start uploading. Thank you. I will try to turn this off quickly. This is, you know, and you don't have to stare at me, figure this out in the end because I don't really know how to cut it off. Okay. Wait, is that recording? Okay. Thank you. Bye.